So, what I'm going to present to you now in 20 minutes is basically a crash course of everything I learned at Berkeley uh, in my video game class. Um, so, let's begin. So, firstly, I want to point out what's, what are the two main differences, I mean, the only main difference between uh, music for video games and music for film that just uh, this. Sorry. So yeah, the main difference is when writing music for film, the picture is locked. So the viewer will have the same experience uh, when every viewer will have the same experience while watching the film. Uh, but in music for video games, every player will have a, will have a different experience. So it's great that uh, in music for video games, it's great that the music translates this as well, so that the music really interacts with the player's uh, movements, with the player's decisions. And this is what we call a dynamic or adaptive or interactive music. Uh, so the techniques I'm going to show or explain briefly in this presentation uh, are techniques that developers can use in their games to, to enhance the player's uh, experience. So that, uh, for example, when a player goes from one section of the world, game world, to another section of the game world, that music uh, changes in a way that the player doesn't really recognize the change. Uh, and this can, of course, be a very strong tool. Uh, so the techniques uh, we're going to discuss are looping, uh, probably most of you are familiar with this technique, then cross-state transitioning, layering, branching, and grouping, and lastly, self-composing or algorithmic generative music. Uh, and, of course, in the end, uh, the combination of all the techniques uh, mentioned above. So, let's go to looping. So, what is a loop? A loop is a sample of a performance that has been edited to re repeat seamlessly when the audio file is played play and to end. Uh, and what is a crossfade? A crossfade is audio volume editing that makes a smooth tra transition between two audio files. Uh, so let's look at this little uh, nice thing I did in Paint. Uh, so let's say we have one section of music. This is our first loop. Uh, so oh, let, me, let me say that this technique that I'm going to uh, first show you is called uh, loop crossfading. So basically, you have one loop, this, uh, this can be, let's say, your adventure music. So you maybe have two game states in your game, one is uh, the, your character is exploring, and the second game state, your character is in battle. So the composer makes one loop for the uh, adventure exploring uh, game state, and one loop for the uh, battle game state. And in between you have a short transition that tries to seamlessly, or as seamlessly as possible, transition from one loop to the other. Uh, so let me show you this in, in, in context. So this is uh, one of the simulators that our professor at Berkeley, Ben Hope, uh, gave us so we can try out this technique. Um, so I put the video up. Uh, Batman Arkham City. So he's exploring, exploring, exploring. And what, now we're in section one. So when I hit when I hit section two, you will hear the transition, and then going into the battle music. So now he spots an enemy. And now the battle music starts. So uh, I make this transition now here not as seamless, uh, but to make uh, the point. Now he's battling the bad guys, and so now he's trying, so now he's back to exploring, so transition plays, and he goes back to the exploration mode. Uh, and of course, I mean, you can, you, can, you can make this, maybe you have five, six, seven game states, maybe you have, uh, so you have seven loops, or maybe you can also have uh, many, many transitions. Now we have the same transition, so if, uh, if a player is going to listen to the same transition every time, it's going to be kind of repetitive again. So 
maybe it's smarter to make many different transitions. Uh, so this transition out of the files. Okay, so um, let's go on. Um, is, uh, does anyone have any questions here about looping, or is this pretty straightforward, I guess? Okay. So the next technique is, is layer. Uh, in video game music, the term layering is used when the musical score is composed in layers, or stems, which are triggered by a designated event in, in the video game. So, uh, let me just show you this uh, nice picture I made again. So this is layer one. So let's say layer one, let's say you have a game state, uh, a game with four game states. Maybe you have, uh, let's say, well, the, the music I'm going to show you is from a game I'm currently working on. If the game states are uh, exploring, then spot an enemy, uh, engaging enemy, and then uh, near death, uh, so your, your player has, I mean, your uh, hero has, has low health. So in that, uh, every layer corresponds to one game state. So let's say the first layer is just very atmospheric, not much is going on. So then we add the second layer, so the first layer is still playing, and all of these layers, of course, are the same length, length and work as loops. So the second player, the, the, you spot an enemy, so you get a bit more action in the layer. Uh, a bit more percussions, a bit more instruments, so the instrumentation is, the instrumentation is bigger. And then layer 3, of course, you add even more percussion, or layer 4, you're almost dead, so it's, uh, all the tail breaks loose. Uh, but, I mean, this, this can be used in, 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 in so many different ways. I mean, let's say layer 1 can be only rain, and some, some nice chords, layer 2 can be a violin solo, layer 3 can be whatever. So the composer has to create these layers that they work together uh, in, a, in, a, in a good way. So here's another simulator. So this is layer 1. So not much is really going on. The player is just walking around. It's creating some sort of atmosphere that's getting this sort of like bronze age or whatever. So then we have layer two. Sort of, sort of wrong. 
So you're actually manipulating some information to the viewer that's not really there in the picture. And the same goes uh, to music for video games. Uh, maybe you're trying to tell the player that there might be some enemies around the corner, but you don't want to really say there are enemies around the corner. So with the music you can just add maybe a bit more tension, a bit more percussion, uh, and the player won't say, oh, the music changed, now I have to watch. But subconsciously, you'll feel a bit more tension in the, that, uh, that place. Okay, so let's go to the next uh, technique. Uh, branching and grouping. So branching is when the game determines what musical section to branch to when crossing a musical boundary, basing the next piece of music to play on the current state of the game, such as the current game world. Okay, so let me, let me put that in context. Uh, so again, uh, so in, in grouping the game plays randomly, randomly between a selection of musical loops in a group. Every group has its own distinct musical loops and uh, represents a, a different game state. So example, group 1 is exploring, group 2 is enemy spotted, group 3 is engaging enemy, and group 4 is low count. So basically the same as in layering, but in grouping, Let's say we have an intro that plays every time we start the game. And then in group A, you have one, two, three, four different loops. And from the intro, the music can go either to, to group one, group two, groups, group, uh, group A1, group AB, AC, AD. And of course, if it goes to A1, then the music can go from A1 to AB, AC, or AD. And of course, all the permutations of that. So the composer has to create these loops in a way that every loop can go into the next, uh, in, any, in any of the next boxes. Uh, did I explain that uh, in a way that you understand? I hope. So of course, A, B can go into A, uh, A, uh, 1 A, 1 C, or 1 D. And then of course, if we go to group D, now, now we uh, start we spot the enemy. So of course any of these boxes can go to any of these boxes. And any of these boxes can go there. So uh, this is really, really tough to compose because you have to compose it in a way that it can go from anywhere to anywhere. But the positive outcome of that is that, uh, uh, for example, if we only take group 1, you will have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 options. So that's uh, 24 different options of how the music is going to be played in only one group. And for example, if you have a game where these game states uh, change pretty rapidly, uh, this is a great technique because uh, you will be able to shift from group 1, group 3, and you will be able to have a score for your game that will be almost unique for every player. So, oh, so let's let's see this in, in, in the musical context. So let me explain. Uh, sorry. Ajay. Yeah. You, you have to wait to the end of the box, to the end of the. the yeah, that's box. the only thing that's. You cannot interrupt it in the beginning. Well, I mean, you can do whatever you, you want uh, in programming, but in this basic concept, uh, you have to wait till the end of the box. So that is cool why uh, that is a good idea to have these branches in the group short, not really long. Uh, so let me explain. This is when I'm going to play uh, start. It's going to start. The intro is going to play. And here you can observe the seconds till the next transition. So intro. So two, one. And now we're going to group A. Now we're exploring. And I think I only have four branches in one group. It's a good idea to have as many as possible. So now we go to group B. So the, the, the transition is seamless. You don't hear any, any you don't feel any gap between our end. The group B maybe a bit more tense. So now group C. And now let's say we go back to group A. And we're 
we're back to back to exploring and then we're attacked again. And we finish the game. So yeah, um, the, the thing you have to maybe take into, into consideration is that the longer your branches in one group will be, the longer it will take uh, you for you to transition from one game state to the other. So if you have like, this is a good idea, uh, if you have longer, longer, um, uh, longer branches in one group is that let's say you have a, an adventure game where you have different worlds in one game. So when a when a player passes from one world, let's say from a desert world to a jungle world, probably the transition in the game won't be sudden. Here we're we're in the jungle and now we're in the desert, so it's going to be a smooth transition. So the, the so you yeah you get the point. So but if you have a game where your game states change rapidly, then it's a smarter idea to have these branches really really short. But you can compensate of like having two second branches in one group, but make twenty of them. So you still will have enough musical material not to uh, get the player bored. Okay, so let's go on. So the last uh, technique uh, I would like to discuss, and this is the most intricate technique, is self-composing composing music or, or algorithmic generative music. Uh, instead of relying on individual tracks of audio, some games self-generate their musical content on the fly based on programmed algorithms, sets of rules, and pre-existing audio samples and or media files. So I did a bit of mistakes. Uh, a bit of a mistake here in the beginning. I should say tracks of not audio but music. So the composer here does not create musical sections. Uh, he creates some sort of audio files, let's say only one tone on the piano, and he samples the piano like in one octave. Uh, so if you we go on all the wild keys in five keys in a row. And then he programs that in a way that the program chooses each key every two seconds, he chooses a different key to play, a different key to play. So a program can do that. So in a way, you would have a pretty, uh, a pretty simple score in this way, but you can go pretty intricate with this. Uh, and okay, let me let me show you this first. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. And, uh, so. Like an uh, analog uh, way of thinking of algorithm music is this Steve Wright piece uh, called Pendulum. Uh, so basically, just microphones going over uh, amplifiers and making sounds. But every time you will play this piece, it will be different. Every single time, because the pendulums won't react the same, it's how much force you put into them. So if this music changes, it's nobody's touching it and it goes on for nine minutes, you know. It's not very pretty, but you know, but this is like a basic concept of algorithm music, or for example, canon is like da 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 you know a canon, so one starts singing and after two bars, another person, another person, another person. So this is just a set. This is just a rule we made, and we sing it in this way. The same thing you can program things like this in your game. Uh, so yeah, this is as a final project uh, at, at Berkeley. We had to create this kind of algorithmic music, um, and the thing I was playing in the beginning. It's this is self-composed music. This music is composed on the fly. It's never going to be the same. And uh, I don't want to get too much into detail of how I did this. If anyone wants to come take a look, uh, uh, come here after the presentation. But it's basically I have a pool of audio files, just one tone, section, just one tone. So it's not a chord, not a melody. And I programmed it. This is a program called Maximus P, uh, that it randomizes between these audio files. 
So now we're in landscape 2 and we can go into landscape 1. And we get a quest solved. Some level ups. And a new skill. We get a melody. And now we're in danger zone, so I click danger and we get some percussion on top of that. The really the key here is that the music is never going to be the same. It's never going to be exactly, exactly the same. So in this way, you're truly creating a unique experience for every single player. And now there's no danger again. Then we get a quest solved. And we go back to landscape. So this kind of techniques maybe would be this kind of algorithmic technique would be probably the, probably best for for adventure games, exploring games where you just want to kind of set an atmosphere. Uh, this is not a good technique if you want to have really melodic music. This works great for creating atmosphere, but uh, in the beginning you want to have some some melodies. It gets a bit more tougher to do. Uh, okay, so music implementation software. Uh, we have Wise, FMOD, and also then Unity and Unreal have their own audio implementation uh, software inside. Uh, but I don't want to go too much into detail here. Uh, but a good idea is if you have a, if you want to uh, take your game to this level to incorporating these kind of uh, music techniques is that you have to have a composer that knows these techniques and you have to have an audio imp implementation person, someone that's actually going to implement this into the game. Uh, you might find a composer that knows how to do both, but you know, both of these skill sets are, are different in a way. Uh, so it's good to have an audio guy on your team that knows how to do this kind of things. Uh, okay, so final thoughts. Uh, key of every great video game is that it has the ability, if only for a few minutes, to disconnect the player from the physical world and teleport him into a new and undiscovered territory. Since music works on the player's subconscious mind, it without a doubt has the ability to forward the feelings of tension, atmosphere, joy, sadness, etc. to their brains. If done correctly, music can be a great tool in helping making the player's experience even more fulfilling and unique. Thus, it should be a key ingredient in every video game. Okay, maybe not every video game if you are playing Pacianza on, 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 on your PC, maybe you don't need a score for that. But, uh, but warning, if done incorrectly, your players will just hit the mu music button. Uh, and uh, probably that's not what you want to do. You want to keep the music uh, so interweaved with the game that the player won't consciously listen to the music. And if you will read any interviews with uh, major film scoring composers or game scoring composers, they will say that good music is not heard. Uh, it's just uh, yeah, as I, as I stated a lot of times, it works on the subconscious mind. But if you create bad music, then the player will just uh, be annoyed by it. And if he will be annoyed by your game, and will just maybe stop playing the game or mute the music and play the game without the music. So I highly encourage all, all developers to seek uh, composers that know their craft. Not just their neighbors that play two chords on the guitar and have a uh, reason to stop on their on their uh, Mac. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to hire people that know their skill and every skill set. So that being all, thanks for listening and, and if you have any questions please go ahead.